Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with the Fan TV. Back at you, another video. Like the content of this video, go ahead, smash that like button, like the content of this channel. Go ahead, and hit subscribe, man. Listen, the Ravens beat the Saints 27 13 on Monday Night Football. It was a game that the Ravens dominated from start to finish. Now, were there some issues throughout the game? Of course, there were, uh, but we're going to talk about that. Uh, but first, I want to give out the standout performers, okay? Uh, we got to start with Justin Houston. Justin Houston. Uh, he may be the best player on the Ravens right now. The guy who's playing the best, who's having the most effect on the game. It might just be Justin Houston, bro. Um, I don't even know if you can say turning back the clock, but, you know, obviously he's a little up there in age. He was talking about in the post-game press conference that he was thinking about retiring, and so he's going all in on this season, and it looks like it. Uh, the Ravens put out a stat that he's the first Raven to have three straight games with multiple sacks. And we got to think about some of the guys that the Ravens have had coming off the edge. You know, you got your Sizzles. You got, uh, you know, Peter Bowyer. You got your Elvis Dumervilles. You know, Judon, Zedarius. So the Ravens have had some really talented pass rushers. And Justin Houston is the first one to have multiple sacks in three straight games. The Ravens' pass rush has come alive since he's been back. Like, literally. Him and Calais Campbell were clearly the Ravens' two best pass rushers in terms of getting to the quarterback last night. But Justin Houston ran the show, man. Uh, so, officially, he had two and a half sacks with him, him and Calais combined on the sack. Uh, and he had an interception. Oh, and he had a pass deflection as well. Justin Houston did it all last night. I believe Brent Urban tipped the pass up and Justin Houston caught it. So, he's playing some of the best football that we've seen from a Ravens defensive lineman in a long time, right? And he's not I'm not. He's not even playing all of the snaps, really. You know, the Ravens still got him on the pitch count. They're still rotating him in and out just because, you know, you want to keep him fresh. Um... But he looked great last night. And Justin Houston really and truly might be the Ravens' best player right now at the moment. Um, and that's no shot to anybody. That's just giving acknowledgement to how good and how well he's playing at the moment, bro. So shout out to Justin Houston. You know, keep it up. Um, so second stand up performer. I got to give it to the new guy. Roquan Smith didn't play. Um, he played probably around half the snaps. I got to see when the snap counts officially come out. I had to guess somewhere around 50% of the snaps. But he was all over the field. Like, everything you saw he did for the Bears, he instantly came here and did that here. We're talking about waiting through offensive linemen, hitting the running back in the backfield, and wrapping them up. Every time Roquan Smith hit somebody, they went to the ground. And listen, that sounds like a real obvious statement. He's a linebacker. He's supposed to do that. And you're right. But for this Ravens team, we haven't had a linebacker where he said, if he gets his hands on the guy, that guy's going to the ground. We haven't had that in a little while, right? Patrick Crean is playing better. He's playing um, up to that first-round status and things like that. But he still misses tackle sometimes. He, he still does. Now, Roquan is only one game, and he didn't play the whole game. But when he was in there, uh, we talked about stuffing Alvin Kamara on back-to-back -back plays, including the third and one that forced the Saints to punt. Um, we're talking about Kelvin Alvin Kamara out the backfield on a little out route. Kamara uh, here to go for the shimmy. Kamara catches the ball. He tackles him instantly. It's like a one-yard game, all right? Now, Kamara still did his thing. You know, he's out of Kamara. You're not going to shut him down for the whole game, but the Ravens pretty much kept him in check for most of the game. Um, Roquan Smith is going to be a really, really good addition to this defense, and he's showing it already. Even in limited action, he's already showing his impact. So I really, really loved what I saw from Roquan Smith, and hopefully he keeps that up, okay? Um, so hold on. Officially, Roquan Smith had... Five total tackles, two solos, um, and he was – so it was three guys tied with five tackles. You got Kyle Hamilton, who also played really, really well. Uh, Patrick Queen and Marla Humphrey had led the league in tackles – sorry, led the team in tackles with seven, five solos, one TFL, one sack, uh, one pass deflection. Marlo balled out too. Marla Humphrey – I can really mention him every day on this channel. Marlon Humphrey's playing some of the best football he's played since – uh, 2019 in that season. So shout out to Marlon Humphrey as well. All right. Um, so the last down number four I want to get to, Kay and Drake. Kay and Drake is having that Devontae Freeman like ascent that we saw last year. Devontae Freeman was um, not good to start off. Right. Uh, he looked he looked his age. He looked old. Things like that. Kay and Drake was the same way. He was not good to start out. So. Maybe it's just, you know, us Ravens fans, I'm putting myself in that mix, are just too harsh on these running backs when they come into the system initially. Maybe they need some time to gel with it because once they get going, they start playing really well. Devontae Freeman 
played really well after the first, like, I think I want to say three weeks. And Kendrick's on that same kind of ascent, right? So he finishes this game versus the Saints with 24 carries for 93 yards and two touchdowns and two catches for 16 yards, right? Now, so that's 109 yards of total offense for Kenyon Drake on 26 touches. So he had a really good game. Um, the Ravens leaned on him heavily. He was the guy that um, that was getting all the carries. Justice Hill only had four carries for 11 yards um, and one catch for eight yards. So Kenyon Drake is clearly, if Gus Edwards is out, if J.K. Dobbins is out, uh, uh, Kenyon Drake is clearly the lead back for the Ravens, and he's putting it out there that it's pretty good. Four yards to carry, well, 3.9, we'll round up to four, four yards a pop. That's good stuff, man. The first half, the Ravens run game really didn't get unlocked fully, but second half, Colin Tampa Bay game, they started to gash um, the Saints. I believe the stat was something like they had 56 yards of rushing in the first half and about 135, 140 yards in the second half. So um, good game for the uh, for the running game, especially in the second half once again. All right, so those are, those three guys are my stand-up performers, but a lot of guys play well, you know. So, but those three guys to me are the are the standout guys. Um, I guess I will mention for Marlon Humphrey because when I looked at his stats and now I'm thinking about to the game and to his impact, Marlon Humphrey was really really good last night. All right, um, so I'm not gonna do uh, so. I, I'm gonna go over the game. We're not gonna talk about everything like that, but we're gonna do you know just just some key moments. So, uh, quarter by quarter. So first quarter. I thought it was interesting the fact that Deshaun Jackson started the game, right? But we also got to talk about the fact that Deshaun Jackson did get a catch, and you know he looked okay running routes. He did, but he pulls he he gets a hamstring injury. This is one of the reasons about signing a thirty-five year old wide receiver, bro. All right, my man Evan mentioned it in one of our game previews that you know him being up there in the age and him being a burner, his hamstrings can be more susceptible to injury, and he was right. All right. Um, now, hopefully, it's nothing serious. Hopefully, we see Deshaun Jackson back soon. Uh, Ravens have this bye week, so hopefully, he can rest up and get right. Um, I thought early on, the, the offensive line wasn't holding up well. Lamar Jackson was kind of bouncing around in the pocket because he looked uncomfortable behind the O-line. Um, that got shored up. But what I will say is about the first quarter for the Ravens offense. The passing game got in the rhythm on the second drive. We saw Isaiah Likely. We saw James Prochet. Um, once again, it was a really, really good play by Greg Roman. They, they pretty much run the Tampa Bay play, but a different variation of it. So they run a fake QB sweep. Isaiah likely uh, leaks out, touchdown. Great play for the Ravens. So Lamar was sharp early on, really was. Ravens defense was really good to start off as well. Tyus Bowser, good to see him back out there. He comes free on the blitz. Uh, Kyle Hamilton gets his first career interception, but it's called back because of passing the frame on Chuck Clark. Um, that play was kind of ticky-tack a little bit because it looked like the, the, the tight end was going off the block. Then he switched up to a route, so it's what it is on that one. We talked about Roquan Smith, stuff it out Alvin Kamara on back-to-back -back plays. This guy does not miss tackles. Like he's he's a missile. He he gets locked on, you're onto the ground. Um, Justin Houston sat. And then they had a really creative blitz, right? Uh, I want I just wanted to mention this. So shout out to Mike McDonald, right? He blitzes Patrick Queen, kind of a delay, but Patrick Queen runs right into the guard. So he could free up, so he could free up Justin Houston for a free run on the, uh to get get Andy Dalton. I like that. I've really never seen that kind of blitz before. You know what I mean? I'm sure it's common, but I just haven't really noticed it. Like Patrick Crean runs straight into the guard to free up Justin Houston. So I thought I thought that was really really nice to see. Um second quarter. Uh one thing I will say, the Ravens office did get a lot of different looks, you know, some trip sets, some I feel like in the first half they were more open to spreading the ball out. The second half they went more heavy. But in the first half, you know, they, they, they opened things up a little bit, had some RPOs that um, that they used, even though someone got called back for penalties because a legal man downfield. Uh, Lamar Jackson almost makes the play of the year where he drops the ball after getting stripped by uh, his own old line, Morgan Moses. Those are like 50, 60 yards on the field that Deshaun Jackson couldn't come down with it. But, you know, he it's Lamar doing his thing. He has some good runs in that quarter. Um at, at a certain point in the game, uh, about halfway through the uh, second quarter, eight Ravens, eight different Ravens had touched the ball. Now, that's spreading the ball around. That's efficiency. That was nice to see, okay? Um, James Boucher got into action. Uh, Kay and Drake caught a little flat route to get down to the one. Kay and Drake punches it in. Ravens 14-0. Um, once again, the Ravens are controlling the clock. Long drives. They made this game short. Made this game condensed. Um... As far as the defense goes, Justin Houston already up to seven sacks on the year. We talked about him already, man. 
incredible player. Um, Adafi Owe made some good tackles. Um, now, the only thing that happened in the second quarter that was, I don't want to say worrying, but the, the, the Saints moved the ball at will on their two-minute drive. Now, for the Ravens, they luckily for them, Marquez Callaway drops a touchdown in the end zone uh, after Marcus Peters kind of get he, – he, they were kind of attacking Marcus Peters. And that's something that I will talk about as well. I think Marcus Peters was seeing a little bit of slippage in this play, all right? It could be the injury. It could be some things. I don't know. But we're talking about passing the fairness plays, um, back-to-back weeks. We're talking about um, – now, you can't be perfect in coverage. These wide receivers are really good in the NFL, but – you know, this play Marcus Callaway, Marcus Callaway run, is running to the outside. Marcus Peters just stops running. Like, he's mad about something. Like, I guess he wanted maybe an OPI called on Callaway, but you can't just stop running. So, we got to watch out for Marcus Peters. I don't know. We're seeing, I'm seeing, seeing a little slippage in play. Just, just a little bit. Um, But anyway, Marlon, they, they tried to target Marlon on, uh, versus Cliff Olave. N- nothing happening there. So, Saints got to kick a field goal. All right. 14-3 halftime. Ravens. Ravens looking good. Now, second half, Ravens start with the ball. Uh, the run lanes are massive now. King Drake is doing doing his thing. Um, this, this Ravens offensive line is really wearing down the Saints. It's clear to tell. Um, oh, for one, something I want to mention. The Saints defender hit Lamar Jackson low in the pocket. Lamar Jackson looked up at the referee and asked for the flag, and he got it. I'm so happy Lamar Jackson did that because he said after we played the Bills, when Josh Allen did that, he said, I'm going to start asking for the flag, and he did it. Because too many times, because Lamar Jackson is athletic, he can escape sacks, things like that, the referees will not throw the flag. So I'm happy he did that. Keep asking for that flag, Lamar, to keep it. Keep asking for it. Um, anyway, the Ravens are moving easy. Lamar is taking check downs. It looks good. Uh, but once again, the Ravens kind of stall out in the red zone. But it's a long ball control drive. This is the opening drive of the, uh, of the second half. And then Ravens, I think the Ravens took six minutes off the clock. Right? So 17-3. Um... As far as the defense goes, once again, the Saints passing game has got a little bit better, but Justin Houston disrupts the drive again. Another sack. Uh, Ravens challenged the fumble on Andy Dalton, but it's pretty clear he wasn't fumbling the ball like until he the ground makes him call makes him makes him fumble the football. Right? I think John Harbaugh and the, and the Ravens review team is still really bad at deciding what to challenge and what not to challenge. I think they're really still really bad at that. Um, but it's what it is. Whatever. Ravens just a timeout there. Um, <laughs> Mike McDonald, I like it, man. Third and short, Saints driving down the field. The Ravens go Wink Martindale style, all out blitz, and send Marlon Humphrey, and he gets to Andy Dalton. Sack, Saints stall out in the red zone again, 17 6. McDonald switched it up. He was blitzing, he was dropping coverage. He's really coming into his own as a defensive coordinator, and we got to give him his credit. He, he's making constant adjustments each and every game. So shout out to Mike McDonald, bro. So fourth quarter is where it gets kind of interesting. So the Ravens are kind of going three and out in offense on a couple of drives. Deshaun Jackson gets the hamstring injury, things like that. But an old problem creeps back into the Ravens. The offense is so slow getting to the line of scrimmage. This leads to another timeout call. So the Ravens only had one timeout left with 11 minutes left in this football game. If this game was close, that would have been a real issue. Um... It leads to a timeout by John Harbaugh because he thinks Lamar Jackson is not going to get the snap off. Um, it leads to Lamar Jackson being extremely frustrated. Even after they call a timeout, a couple plays later, they get a delay of game. Right? Lamar Jackson and Ronnie Stanley get into it, which I have no problem with. Lamar is frustrated. They're frustrated. I get it. Okay, so I, I really don't have no problem with them arguing with your teammates. I really don't have no problem with that. To me, Lamar showing a lot of leadership this year. Before, Lamar would just get mad at himself. He would keep it all internal. This year, he's expressing to his guys what he likes and doesn't like. I have no problem with that. He's the quarterback. We see see Tom Brady do it all the time with his leadership when he does it. Don't let it be any different when Lamar Jackson does it. Anyway, this issue creeped back up, and the Ravens got to fix it. They got this bye week to fix it, all right? You get 25 seconds on the shot on, on the game clock, excuse me. The Ravens constantly get to the line with five seconds left on the play clock. (laughs) They constantly do it, especially in this fourth quarter. It happened... Damn it, the whole entire drive they were on, it happened. Five, six plays, it seemed like. They have to get better at that. They have to. Um, but anyway, so the, Ravens, the Ravens stall on that drive. They kick a field goal 20 to 6. Uh, they get the ball back. They get the ball back after the um the interception. 
by uh, Justin Houston because he's playing amazingly. And Kenyon Drake touchdown shortly after that, 27 to 6. Ravens are killing the game. Um, and this is another play by Marcus Peters, right? Um, Jawan Johnson catches the ball on the sideline. Marcus Peters thinks he pushes him out of the bounds and stops playing. He doesn't complete the play. Now, I said a couple weeks ago versus the Bengals that Marcus Peters had one of his best games tackling. Now, this year, I'm seeing Marcus Peters starting to tackle a lot. This game looked like old Marcus Peters, right? He didn't want any contact. Um, he didn't push you out of bounds is enough. I, I, I didn't like what I was seeing. He, he made a great play earlier in the game. He kind of um, he, he, he stuck on Alvin Kamara. But besides that, I didn't like the tackling I saw from Marcus Peters. I really didn't like the tackling I saw. And that play was a straight-up effort play. He thinks he pushes him out of bounds. He doesn't. The rest of the defense stops playing because they think he pushes him out of bounds. Saints, Saints get a cheap walk-in touchdown. So it's 27-13. Ravens run out the clock. And um, that's pretty much game, man. The final. Ravens 27, Saints 13. So it was an easy game for the Ravens, like I said. It was a really easy game. The defense looked like a top-shelf defense. I can't wait to see this defense with Marcus Williams back. Um, the offense looked good at times. I thought that – I mean, Lamar Lamar was solid last night. He was solid. It wasn't anything spectacular, right? The first half, he was really good, really sharp. Second half, it kind of waned off a little bit. They were able to start to run the ball a little bit more. But it's the same kind of thing. It's, it's hard to pass the ball these heavy sets. Um, even, even in the first half when they were going more spread, I would say Lamar probably missed one or, one or two passes. Uh, like he had Demarcus Robinson in the end zone a little high. And then while he was scrambling out to his right, he kind of threw it behind. I think it might have been Marcus Robinson again. So um, really not too many missed passes to me. Isaiah likely had a couple of drops. It, it, it was a kind of a weird game on offense as far as passing the ball. Um, but I think they're going to come with rhythm. The guys get this bye week. They, they're going to get to work. You know what I mean? So we'll see what happens there. Uh, but the Ravens play a dominating game overall, right? Of course, there's always things you want to clean up and, and fix. But overall, the Ravens dominate this football game. So we're going to leave it at that, man. Give me your thoughts in the comments. Give me your stand-up performance. Um, so let me know. We'll talk about it in the comments, man. It's your boy, Gabriel. There's another fan TV. I'm out.